Hello there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be introducing to you a lovely little kit that I've bought which is this, the ZWO to EOS lens mount adapter with an included filter drawer. Um, I'm going to be able to show you where I think are some really good benefits to this system uh, and also I've got a first light to show you and then just a general overview of how things are going basically with the channel for anyone interested. Now, for those of you who live in the UK, uh, you've probably already been more than aware of this and probably fed up of it, but for about the past week or so, we've had uh, a storm passing overhead, which has led to uh, less than favourable astronomy conditions overall. Uh, and of course, this coincided with a new astronomy purchase. Uh, the two are definitely linked. Um, but yeah, Normally this is a bad thing, but I think in my case uh, it turned out to be a little bit of a positive because when I'm bored I start to tinker and I came across this little uh, this little thing and I don't know if this is common knowledge and I'm just way behind uh, or if this is something kind of not a normal usage case that I've uh, happened upon but so as said I was bored and I was measuring the the distance between uh, the sensor and the end of the flange where it attaches. Uh, so on Canon systems this is usually meant to be 44 millimeters that's the flange to sensor distance um, and it occurred to me basically that if I use a T-ring permanently attached to my telescope be it this Esprit or the 150 PDS here which I may start using at some point um, T-rings are 11 millimeters the Canon ones and that'll take this system neatly up to 55 millimeters of back focus exactly which just happens to be basically the most commonly used back focus distance for many flatteners reducers comma correctors all that sort of thing um, now that's handy in its own, in itself there's no further measurements needed uh, but another benefit to that which I, uh, I really do value uh, is the ability to kind of do this I guess I'll just demonstrate it for you really quickly and that's to remove one piece of equipment let's say the Canon DSLR perhaps vice versa from the lens unattach the camera from wherever it's attached to locate the little red indexing mark put it to the red mark on here and a small rotation and everything is locked totally solid and ready to go I mean it's always in the same uh, rotation once you've set it once basically and that t-rings down tight you set the rotation on the esprit using this little locking ring um, which I've already done but yeah it'll always return to that same rotation session after session so it don't matter if you remove this a hundred times and put it back on as long as things don't rotate you're gonna be back in the exact same orientation which is extremely handy for repeatability um, but it also enables extremely fast switching as you've just seen from let's say taking it off the Esprit, perhaps putting it on the uh, the coma corrector here, it's the same thing, or indeed back on the lens for uh, maybe one of those shorter sessions where you need an extremely fast telescope or lens. So hopefully that kind of demonstrates to you one of the major benefits, I would say, to this sort of system. Um, and that, again, the Canon, totally repeatable. Um, and the other one is just how easy it is to change your uh, your filters out. So I'll just get my old filter drawer here. It's the exact same sort of concept. Uh, the drawers are different though. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but let's say if you're using a color camera like I am, you really only need two filters maximum. Um, and that depends again on your light pollution. Uh, if you live in a very low light pollution area, you may need no filters at all. But Let's say in my usage case, I have one filter for broadband, which is just a UV IR cut filter, which I don't actually need with this uh, with this camera. And the other one is a dual narrowband filter for uh, for capturing nebulae targets, which are faint and wouldn't really show uh, in my light pollution without the filtration. Uh, and changing between the filters is as simple as it's very tight. <laughs> Pop one out with your your filter in. Let's say this is your broadband filter. Just imagine for a moment take the next one slot it in whoops don't drop it <laughs> and index it up 
making a gaff for that, but you get the idea. It's much easier when it's installed on something solid and not your hand. Um, now I mentioned I was. This looks like it's going to fall over. I realised, but it won't. <laughs> um, now I mentioned the the drawers are ever so slightly different. So if you uh, take a look here for a moment, this is the standard ZWO filter draw system. Excuse the wind, it's pretty intense. And this is the EOS one. So you can see there's a slight difference in overall size between them. They both take two inch filters, just the same as one another. Uh, this one has a little cut out, kind of an indent here, whereas this one doesn't. They're slightly, um, sorry, this way up, they're slightly differently constructed overall. Uh, this one's indeed expected to sit on the outside. Uh, kind of like this this lip lines up on the outside of the body of the filter drawer um, And this one it lines up totally flush. I'll just show you that in a second So Hopefully you can see there that this filter drawer lines up totally flush with the body uh, Which is pretty handy. I'd say there's no dust and things can really get transferred in when changing filters as long as you keep this clean it should remain clean now i did manage to get a first light with this system uh basically the overnight actually as of recording this and uh, that was uh, an hour and 25 minutes i think using the little rig here the 135 f2 by samyang the 2600 mc pro and the optolong l extreme and uh, that were a really good test basically because this lens is so fast that any minor errors with tilt and things being introduced by the camera to lens interface if it was let's say a skew ever so slightly uh, it'd really show up ex just <laughs> it'd be disastrous results at f2.8 basically uh, your stars would look awful in whichever corner uh, had the error but Fortunately to report there is no such problem at all indeed the stars in every corner was perfect uh, And I was shooting NGC 7000 which is in Cygnus and at the time I was shooting it It wasn't very far elevated. So basically the, Why that's important is the amount of torque applied uh, by the weight of the lens and the weight of the camera trying to pull apart the lens uh, adapter had absolutely no effect so it's, it's a very strong little adapter and keeps everything totally flat and steady which is uh, great news for imaging purposes now i guess finally i'd just like to say a huge thank you genuinely now to everybody uh subscribed watching liking commenting all the different ways you interact with me it's hugely appreciated uh and i've actually just hit quite a major milestone for me which is a thousand subscribers um it's not really something I ever expected I'd be reaching. I didn't ever expect I'd be recording this sort of thing, saying thank you. Um, but here we are, and I'm more than happy to be here doing so. Uh, and I'd love to see where it's going to go, how far I can perhaps keep moving this channel onwards and keep growing it, because I'm having a lot of fun. And if you're having fun watching the videos, then we're both benefiting, and that's really what counts. Um, within the next week or so, YouTube should then enable me to make community posts. That's kind of a perk that goes along with reaching a thousand subscribers. Uh, and that's basically going to be a way that I can just engage with you guys a little bit more directly than just perhaps in the comment section. I can make a post and many of you will see it if you have notifications enabled. I, I do believe that's the, the thing. Um, and it could be anything basically from just like an update on I've not got anything out because it's bloody cloudy again or it could be perhaps polls asking what you'd like to see next uh, that I can make for you all uh, many other things really it's just that's that sort of thing it's a new way to engage that I'll then have access to so I'm very thankful for that as well so this has been just kind of a break in the cloud and uh, it looks like it's kind of starting to turn again and I want to get everything back inside before it gets rained on um, but yeah I just wanted to say thank you um, looking forward to making another video and I'll see you all next time. Close guys.